Brian's Mitchell Soltis, also known as Strider 2000 on the Anime Studio or now Moho Forum. And I wanted to talk today about uh, a specification I created called M1. M for Mitchell because I created it and it's the first level, so one. When I first started using Anime Studio, I focused on creating very realistic characters and I tried to include the um, head turns up and down and uh, left and right as well as full body turns. So in essence I was trying to create a character that would work in all situations. And what I found is that very quickly uh, it became very complex to create these characters. But they're still pretty nice and I um, am thinking about creating an M2 and M3 specifications for these kinds of characters. But uh, I found that in actual animation I could create uh, nice animations with uh, much simpler rigs. So first of all, the M1 specification is specifically a rig that's designed to make it um, easy to animate. And because I'm cr using the specification to create a lot of characters, they'll have the same behavior and you can actually uh, share actions between them. And all the layers are well scaled so you can actually uh, share artwork between them. One simple thing to show is that um, the original artwork is drawn to a scale a little bit larger than the, the normal uh, view pane, but all of them are saved so they fit into the view pane. And let me show you about that. So the first point is that I have the origin, when you look at it, the origin is actually set to the chin. And the reason for this is I found that that's a nice place to put uh, because as you think about the characters, you're usually going to be f focusing on the head and so I can just move the character to where that chin should be and now if I rescale the entire uh, character he'll come into view pretty nicely. I may have to adjust a little bit but it's the good point is that um, the scaling uh, controls are easily in reach and so this is how they're usually saved fitting into that viewport. And so something just as simple as that makes it very easy if I wanted to now zoom out here and I can, you know, just look, if, move his chin down, let's say, and I wanted to have him as a close to a headshot, it's very easy to scale him appropriately. So all the characters are very easy to scale in position. The next thing to show is that they have a standard set of uh, smartphone controls, and we'll get into more detail about them, but they have a body turn. They have controls for um, the hands, so the left and right hands. Now, um, uh, we'll talk about color coding too. The bones are color co um, coded. Um, right, I'm always using right, not as the uh, character's right, but the right of the screen. Um, but I have for the right side, all of those bones are red, and for the left side, all of them are yellow and the layers are also uh, they're color coordinated so you can easily, it's just easy to uh, see which control controls which things. I have squash and stretch for the head control, a head turn, and I've got quite a number of uh, bones that deal with the expressions and we'll get into that later. Another thing to notice about the smart bone controls is they're all properly anchored to the character. What that means is, if I, as I move the character, the smart bone controls move with him. Of course, all of them have target bones for the feet. And if you happen to notice, I'm uh, demonstrating this in Anime Studio Pro 11. But they will work perfectly fine in Moho 12, because they were actually designed in 12. And they can work in uh, Anime Studio Pro uh, 10 or Anime Studio 10, um, but in 10 they didn't have the bone flipping, which is what when we do the body turn, I'm going to do a body turn here, and a head turn. Uh, in those we're using bone flipping, and so in 10 uh, those bones you probably should just go ahead and remove them, but I will make those available. Uh, version 9, Anime Studio version 9. Um, has too many features that are just uh, not yet available and so you can load them in there but I haven't really uh, when I give my character packs uh, they don't have version 9. 
Okay, so let's talk about um, expressions. That is the biggest power of these characters, and it's the thing that I was most interested in, and so uh, put a lot of energy there. So first let's look at the eyes. Uh, the eye system just has a three bone rig, um, and that allows me to take the eye and just easily move them around. And I can separately move each eye if I wanted to have this, you know, cross-eyed kind of thing or whatever I wanted to do. So it's very easy to control. In addition, I have five uh, bones that are dealing with, two of them deal with the brows, and two of them deal with the eyes of the pupils. So eye angry sad is about kind of the uh, tilt of the eyes. Eye size is the pupils themselves and I open close allows me to do the blink and specifically I've designed it so that you can have that kind of a squinty type of eye if you want that um, and then for the brows they can go down to an angry kind of look and notice that as these uh, brows come down there's actually a skin layer so that your eyes um, aren't showing uh, on top of the eyebrow and then they go up for a surprised kind of look. So you can go anywhere in between those. And there's also a curious or sad. So a curious in the curious shape um, uh, position. One of the brows drops down and one raises a little bit. And in the sad, they move to uh, both kind of curving upward. Now, another very powerful part of the M1 specification is that I have the uh, standard expressions such as normal, sad, happy, surprised, angry, irritated, and curious, and blinks are in uh, the actions. So I can easily just go in and select an expression and click it and copy it in and it will set this expression. So irritated, for example. Um, a couple of key points to, to notice with this. Um, when I apply this action, all it does is move these control bones. One of the advantages here is that that means that you can see the bones be af being affected just by manipulating the bone layer. And of course I can just go in and uh, tweak uh, the bones after I've applied an action. And if, or, of course you can choose whatever um, style of interpolation that you want. The other thing to notice is that when I apply these expressions they don't actually affect the mouth. Now initially when I was first uh, trying to design these I did have it affect the mouth but what I, I found was is that I didn't want uh, the mouth to be fixed by this expression when they're trying to talk so it's the talking is the reason why the mouth is not included in the expression and it's very easy to just go to the mouth and set it to whatever um, expression you want like a smile or, or whatever and of course because blink is so common I've added the blink capability in there another thing to show is that all of our characters that I've created with the M1 um, use styles so that makes it very easy for us to go in and just change the color of the skin, for example, or any of the um, qualities that you want to change. The other thing is that I have added uh, names um, in front, so based upon a character name, so that if you import multiple characters into a scene, especially in um, Anime Studio 11 and 12, or MoHo 12, you can use the default of unlinked shared styles and it's easy to uh, identify the different um, styles. In Moho 10 you don't even need to uh, click that unlinked shared styles because they will be imported differently anyway. So now let's talk about switch layers. Both the mouth and the uh, hands use switch layers and they'll use the vectors um, but they, they could use bitmap. But the mouth has the standard switch layers uh, to make uh, easy lip, lip sync and um, they also have uh, some additional, they may have additional mouths 
they'll definitely have the smile and frown, but depending upon the character, there could be any number of extra um, mouth positions uh, just for emotion. Now I'm going to switch over to Moho 12 uh, just for a second because I've got all my scripts set up there um, and just show you something about the lip sync. Um, I've got a little sound that says that was easy and I'm just going to use my script that I've created uh, lip sync and I'll make that available or it actually is available right now um, and all you have to do is scrub the area and type in the string that you have. I've already typed that one in, and that was easy. You can actually use phonetic, phonetic spelling if you want. And there you go. So that's really just to show that things work well in Moho 12, and uh, you can use the switch layers, the mouth. Lip syncing can be done very easily. And speaking of switch layers, uh, we have switch layers for, for the hands as well. And here's a good example where the bone colors help um, because I'm going to use the left hand, but uh, I can't. F where in the list is that? Well, it's yellow, so it's going to be one of the yellow ones there. So there you go, left arm and left hand. So I'll just show you what these different positions are here in this particular character. So all the characters will have uh, a good set of hands. I think in, on average right now I've got about seven uh, per character or uh, seven standard kind of positions, but there could be more. And right now we're uh, showing the relaxed side. And you don't have to know all of these because the smartphone control, I can just move it and I can select whatever uh, posi hand position that I want. But of course I, I didn't even need to, to see that hand position I can because I'm, I'm on the bone layer and that's really what's controlling things. But you could add any number of hands in there if you wanted to. And the next thing that I want to talk about is the, the views. So um, in the M1 specification we don't have multiple views. We only have a three-quarter view. But in that three-quarter view we can move, the, you know, turn the head and turn the body. Now for turning the head and the body you need to be on a frame other than zero because uh, we actually do move the bones and the head. And so I can see, you know, as I do the body turn, his feet are uh, aligned in a, a proper location, and then the head turn, it turns. Uh, so the bones are actually being moved and positioned uh, in ways that it l looks reasonable. Now, as I've said before, I, I have another specification that I'm using that will uh, allow you to actually have smooth, slow head turns um, and body turns, but there are conflicts for any of of those of you who have actually tried to create the, the head turns, um, they can get very complex and you can get conflicts as you try to turn his left head left and down or things like that. And the choice to use a single view is based upon the fact that uh, that's the predominant uh, view that you want uh, for animation. But that brings me to the next point which is you know these are just standard characters and so this is what is in my specification and this is how all of them, if they say M1, this is how they'll behave and how they'll work. Um, and so they'll all work well together. Um, but of course, if you decided you wanted a slow head turn, you could easily uh, manipulate it and change it uh, just exactly like you would for any other character. So if there's anything that you want to change and uh, make different, uh, you can do that. One last thing to share is, um, if you're new to animation, you may think that you have to have smooth um, head turns and body turns to, to get a nice animation, um, but there's lots of articles on the forum to show how you can achieve nice animation um, with these kinds of quick turns. Um, and the basic idea is you want to have quite a number of things going on. And here I'm going to show, uh, here's one of my characters, and he's going to say, I'm not sure, and he's going to turn his head but he'll also be moving all of his body so when you animate you don't just want to have a simple uh, part moving but everything going on so here's here's what this looks like I'm not sure I'm not sure I'm not sure so the point is that technique can be used for uh, both the head turns and the body turns to get nice effects so that's the essence of the M1 specification and what the characters created with it can do.